Greetings to all viewers of the YouTube channel Electrician One. In today's video, we will get to know the electrical enclosure for reactive power compensation. First, let's have a look at all components and we will interpret them later. The essence of reactive power compensation is the connection of capacitors to the electrical network. Here we can see capacitors and let's immediately clarify what they are. Are they batteries or are they capacitors? In one of these elements, there are practically three capacitors connected to each other in a triangle. When the compensation process is performed, it is good to choose capacitors of different capacities that is different powers. In this particular case, the capacitor C1 is 5 kW, C2 is 10 kW, and C3 and C4 are 20 kW each. Therefore, the electrical enclosure should enable the capacitors to be connected to the electrical network at the moment when there is a need for reactive power. Now we will see how it all works. The main power supply of the enclosure is brought here in these three thermal blocks or three phases immediately after the electricity meter that is immediately after the measuring point. And then we see that all fuses from those three points are powered. So through a three-phase comp bus bar, these small fuses are powered and these two large fuse bases are powered directly through PF conductors. Specifically, these two fuse buses are for currents up to 50 amperes and these smaller ones up to 32 amperes. After the fuse, we lead three energy conductors directly, that is three phases to a conductor, and from the conductor we go to the appropriate capacitor, and so for each level. So from this fuse to the appropriate conductor, then to the capacitor, and so on. These three fuses here, at the very beginning, are one of the control voltage and these two here are for powering the regulator. As for fuses, I would like to mention that it's good to use cartridge fuses, avoid circuit breakers, because such fuses have a much higher braking capacity. Specifically, these have a braking capacity of 100 kA, while circuit breakers have a maximum braking capacity of 20 kA. Contactors for switching capacitive loads are somewhat different from classic ones. They have this addition, which enables to switch on and off capacitors effectively. These wires here, the red ones we notice, are not ordinary wires, but resistors of appropriate resistance. Specifically in this case, the resistance of these conductors is about 1.5 ohms. What is important when switching on capacitors is that this capacity of load addition firstly it connects or bridges each con contactor, powers the battery for a split second before the main contacts are closed. It is very important to note that if you are ever in contact with such an electrical enclosure, you must not touch the terminal of the capacitors, even after switching off. Therefore, a voltage that is life-threatening can be retained at the end of the capacitors for a long time. On the capacitors itself, the resistors here are used to discharge the capacitors. Therefore, it should efficiently discharge the capacitor in a time of about one minute and reduce the voltage to the allowed 50 volts. But in the case of failure, dangerous voltage can be retained after a long time. When will any of these capacitors turn on? It is defined by the power factor regulator. So this is the brain of an electrical enclosure. This regulator, based on voltage and current, which is received from the current transformer, which will be placed outside of this enclosure, monitors the consumer's need for reactive energy, performs certain calculation, and switches exactly at the appropriate capacitor, 
one, two, or as many as needed. Of course, in some situation, all of them. Here we have a cam switch and a regulator power switch. So, we can turn off all the capacitors through that switch. In the enclosure itself, there is a scheme, a scheme of connection, that is a complete scheme of connecting all the elements. What I want to mention is that it is necessary to ground these cabinets well because of the large currents that can occur. Specifically, the total power of this electrical cabinet is 55 kilowatts at 440 volts and the maximum current when turning on all capacitors is 66 amperes.